Hello everyone and welcome back. In our previous video, we have already seen how we can run task asynchronously using completable future. In this video, we will see how we can combine different futures for different use cases with the help of these functionalities. Also, we will see how we can effectively handle exceptions in completable future. If you have not yet watched the first video, I would recommend you to watch it to get the basic understanding. Link is given on the top right corner of your screen. You can also find complete code of these topics on GitHub. Link is given below. Now without any further delay, let's begin. Now let us start with our first scenario. Suppose there are multiple futures and they are dependent on each other. That means the second future's execution will depend on the result provided by the first future. For such scenarios, we can use then compose functionality given in completable future. It will be called on one of the futures and then we have to provide a function which will return another completable future. To demonstrate this, let us consider a very simple example. Suppose we have two different APIs. By calling one, we can get the radius of the circle and by calling the second one, we can calculate the area of the circle for which the radius was retrieved from the first API. Here in dependent futures method, we have get radius completable future, which will internally call the first API and retrieve the radius. For simplicity in this example, we are just returning some value. Then we have another completable future find area which will use the radius received earlier and calculate the area using formula pi r square. Clearly, we can see that find area future is dependent on get radius future. So to make sure that the find area execution starts as soon as the radius is received, we have then compose function available in completable future. Here we are calling then compose on get radius future and then provides a function. It will make sure that the function will be executed only once the get radius future returns some value. That function is returning a completable future by calculating the area of the circle. And in the end, using findarea.get, we are printing the calculated area of the circle. Now let me just execute and show you the output as well. So here you can see the area of the circle is 314.15 which is just 100 times the value of pi. So we are getting the correct value return for area of that circle. So here we have seen two different futures which are dependent on each other. And it's not only for these two, we can make the chain of multiple dependent futures using then compose method depending on our requirements. Now let us move to the second scenario. Suppose there are multiple futures and they can execute independently in parallel and in the end we can combine all the future results to perform some more operations. Unlike in our previous example where find area was dependent on get radius, the futures in this scenario will not depend on each other for their own execution. So for such scenarios we can use then combine functionality. It will be called on one of the future and we have to provide the other future as an argument. In addition to that, we will also need to provide a by function, which will consider the output of both futures as input parameters. And using the output of both the futures, we can perform some operation to return a final result in the form of a completable future. To demonstrate this, let us consider a very simple example. We will be calculating body mass index or BMI in short. Now we know that to calculate BMI, we need two things, weight and height of the person. Let us say both these values are fetched from two different APIs. So unlike the previous example of circle area, both weight and height can be fetched independently. And later, once both are available, then another completable future can be created using then combine to calculate the BMI based on the formula by putting in the values of weight and height. Now let us see how it can be implemented. So this is the first future used to fetch the weight. In this using supply async we are returning a random value between 30 and 100. Now because it's random we are also printing the generated value so that if we want we can verify the final calculation of the example as well. 
Similarly, we have the second feature to fetch the height. Here we are generating a random value between 100 to 200 as centimeters and then converting it to meters. Now we need to calculate body mass index and its formula is weight of the person in kilograms divided by square of the height in meters. Now the same formula has been implemented in this calculated BMI future. In this the first future is get height, the second is get weight and one by function is provided which uses the values returned by both of these futures to calculate the BMI. Now in the end using a get call we are just printing the calculated BMI value. Let us execute this and observe the output. So this is how you can see the height is and weight is returned and using these two values a BMI was calculated. Now let us discuss a couple of more scenarios. Sometimes there are requirements to perform a group of tasks and once all the tasks are complete in the group then generate a report using execution results. This can be easily handled using all of method present in completable future. This method expects an array of completable futures. To demonstrate this, we are going to take a real life example which I have implemented in one of my projects as well. Suppose we have a list of servers and we want to connect to every server to execute a command to identify which operating system is currently running. And once the command is executed on all the servers, then generate a collective report. Now there are multiple steps involved in getting the operating system details from a server programmatically. First we need to connect to the server to obtain a session, then execute the command to, to identify the operating system and in the end get the output in our program to process it further. Now let's see how it can be implemented using all of functionality of completable future. For returning an operating system name, I have created this list of operating systems which we are using to mimic the returned value. Now in this method, we have a list of servers and streaming through this list, we are calling get OS details method, which takes server name as an input parameter. In this, we are connecting to the server and obtaining the session and then executing the command to identify the OS. In the end, returning a completable future of type string that contains server name and a random operating system from OS list in our example. Now as soon as the stream processing of this list is completed, then we will have a list of completable futures. Now using all of method from completable future, we make sure to get all the futures output and saved in list once all of them are completed. By this way, we will generate a final report once all the futures are completed and return the operating system details. Now for combining the futures, let's discuss one last scenario as well. In the previous one, we were waiting for all the futures to complete before moving ahead. But suppose if we just want to move ahead if at least one of the future is completed. So as soon as first future is complete, we just want to take its output and discard the other ones. To handle such scenarios, any of method from completable future can be used. It is similar to all of method, but it just checks the quickest future to return the result and discard the others. Let me just demonstrate this with another very simple and real example. Suppose we want to get some content from one of the CDN servers. CDN servers are used to provide content in quick times for various applications. Now what we will do, we will request multiple CDN servers for the content and out of them whichever returned the content in quickest time will be considered and others will be discarded. In achieving this method any of from completable future will be able to help us. Now let us see a very simple code example for implementation of this solution using any of method. Now in this method we can see we have a list of CDN servers from different regions like NAM for North America, EMEA for Europe, APAC is for Asia Pacific and MX for Mexico. A request to all these servers will be sent using get content method 
and there we have defined a variable thread sleep time to mimic different time taken by different servers. Then using method any of we manage this list of completable future returned while submitting the request. This any of method will check and see which of the future object return the result in quickest time. That will be considered and all others will be discarded. So in the end again using a get call we are printing the quickest response content on the console. Now let us run this and we will see that all the CDN servers will receive a request but in the end only the fastest one will be considered and all others will be discarded. So here you can see the request was received on all the regions APAC, NAM, EMEA, MX but in the end NAM was the server which responded in the quickest time. So that response was only considered and other regions response was discarded. With this we are done with combining multiple future topic. If you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section on any of these methods then compose then combine all of and any of. Now we will move to the second topic for today which is exception handling. We can see that proper exception handling was not present in case of future and to overcome that completable future was equipped with proper exception handling functions. Before we discuss those methods let us just see how exception propagates and how it affects the flow of program execution. Let us say this is our chain processing using completable future. First it fetches the data from a remote server then the data is passed. After that some calculations are performed on the past data and in the end the final result is displayed. Now suppose an exception is thrown in the first step of remote server call itself. In that case flow will never invoke parsing data and performing calculation operations. Similarly if exception is raised in the parse data operation then again exception will end the flow there itself without calling the next step. Same is for the next chained operation as well. So it becomes very important to handle the exceptions properly to maintain a proper flow of program. I hope this flow is clear to you. Now let us see how we can properly handle the exceptions raised in completable future. Now we know that the execution can only result in two outcomes. It can be successful or it can raise an exception if not successful. In case it is successful then the completable future provides two callbacks to handle the response which are when complete and handle. In those callbacks we will have access to the exception object as well. Just in case any exception happen so we can access the exception from the exception object. Secondly when it is not successful that means the exception is thrown. In that case we can either directly use exceptionally or we can use the callbacks we have just discussed which were when complete and handle. Now let us see the real implementation of these three methods as well. First way is using exceptionally function. In this if completable future completed successfully without an exception then it will return the result as it is and if an exception is thrown from the future on which exceptional is attached to then using the function implementation in exceptionally we can handle the error by logging it and returning some default value like minus one in this case. Another way to handle the exceptions is handle method. Once the handle method is attached to any future then it will always be executed even if there is an exception or it is successful. In the handling we have to define a by function which will have first parameter as result of the future if it is successful and second parameter is an exception object. So inside the by function implementation we need to check if exception object is not null that means an exception is thrown from the future. So in that case we can log the details and return some default value like we are returning minus one in this case. And in case the exception object is null that means the future was successful so we can directly return the response as well. There is one more way to perform some operation in case of exception which is using when complete. As its name suggests this will be executed when the future completes its execution normally or with an exception. It is almost same as handle but with a very small difference that it cannot return anything further. 
So if you see in case of handle, we were returning either a default value in case of exception or if it is successful, then directly whatever is the response, we were returning that. But that is not possible with when complete. So in this case, if an exception is thrown, in that case, the response object will be null. And if future completed normally, then the exception object will be null. We can either log the exception if an exception is raised or we can print or process the result from future, but we will not be able to return anything from here. Now let us just execute it and see the output for all these three methods. So here you can see we were able to get a default value in case of handle and exceptionally, but in case of when complete, we were only able to print the exception details. So these were a lot of functions. I really wish I could cover some more, but that'll just make it more and more lengthy. With these many methods which I have covered, I hope you will be able to understand any of the other methods which are available in completable future. For more insights, please do check out the official documentation of completable future. Link is given in the description. With this, we have come to an end of completable future. In case you have any suggestions or feedback, please do comment. And if you found this video and any other video useful on my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.